Diagrams are a really powerful way to illustrate and visualize a concept for your team in Confluence. But the challenge is, while Confluence has great diagramming apps, you may have found that it's hard to create a great diagram. Hi, I'm Matt with K15T and I'm going to show you the things you need to keep in mind as you get started creating a diagram, the importance of color and the role it plays in creating this visualization of the concept you're diagramming, and finally the value of text formatting and how it makes your content more readable and understandable. The good news is you don't have to start from scratch on your diagram. There are a lot of different predefined types of diagrams you can use for illustrating different types of concepts or contexts. Check out our other video where we take a look at a few of those and what you might use them for. As you get started creating your diagram, you can either start with a blank slate or you can go from one of these many predefined templates to help you sort of get an idea for how your diagram could look as you're making it. In my case, I know exactly what I want to make, so I'm going to go ahead and pick a flowchart and get started. Now I'd love to jump in here and start having a whole bunch of fun, seriously, but first I need to make sure I have a great name for my diagram. And that's because this diagram will appear in Confluence search results. So I want to make sure that the title of the diagram encompasses the keywords that I know people are going to search for. This is also important if you're using an app like Scroll Viewport to publish your Confluence content out to a public help center. That's because this diagram will also be indexable by search engines like Google. So you want to make sure that the name fully describes what's encompassed in the diagram. If you want to know more about what naming does with Confluence search and how to name things well, check out this other video we have on that exact topic. As you get going, you're going to find that you're just piling a bunch of objects onto the diagram canvas. And that's cool. You got to get the ideas out of your head sometime, but we can always make great better. In this case, we really need to use a bit of white space between these objects. Give the eye a bit of room to peruse through the concept, and this actually helps the brain a lot as well. And speaking of helping the brain, you might find that your diagram begins to become very complex. And when that happens, you need to be mindful that it needs to be broken up into several different diagrams. Maybe one diagram that overviews all the concepts you want to cover, and then following diagrams that explore each part of that. Not only is this better for learning, it's also better for displaying your content on small screen devices, because people can easily browse through those different diagrams you have and view the images of them even on a small screen. At this point, my diagram looks like a bit of a mess, and that's because I didn't use a color theme here. That's okay, we don't make mistakes, just happy accidents. To improve this, we need to go with some of the color themes used in our branding. And that was already defined by someone else, so it's great, I can just apply these to all the objects here. Now, when you're picking out these colors, you want to just use a couple of them. And that's okay to just have a few colors as friends. But you want to make sure the colors that you use are great for those folks who have color blindness or visual impairment issues. Make sure that that palette is going to look great for them and read really well for them. You can also use different shades of colors like I have here to make sure that different types of objects are differentiated from each other. And if you care about something, commit to it. Standardize the way your objects look so that all of your diagrams look great. If your brand doesn't use drop shadows, don't use drop shadows. Don't use gradients if your brand doesn't use gradients. Make sure your objects are kept in line. Ensure that all of your lines connecting objects have a similar style as well. All of these things work together to make sure that your diagram looks great and is optimized for people to learn the concept that you're trying to illustrate. So I'm looking at another diagram here, and I really want to make some happy objects. So first off, it's important to know just a little bit about typefaces. So first of all, there's two different types of font. There's sans serif, which is missing those little squiggly things on it, and it's more modern. And then there's serif, which has the little squiggly things, and it's a bit more formal. You don't really need to know much more about those, because often it's specified in your brand guidelines the type of font you should use for your diagrams. So I've selected all of my objects here, and I'm going to change these all to Helvetica. And our brand's guidelines say it should be 12 point. So already you can see how the objects are looking much, much more aligned. Sometimes really important elements are just hiding in your diagram, and you just need to push them out. Like this one, for example. I've made a mistake here and used a bad color. I tried to use red to call attention to it, but red on blue it does not really do a lot for the eyes. So I'm going to move that back to a white. That's a lot better. And instead, I'm going to use bold. 
Also, for light colored objects, try to use a dark colored text. That almost always helps that text pop out a little bit more. And then for deep colored objects like the other ones here, try to use a light colored text because that will also help with contrast. Keep in mind that when it comes to text inside of diagrams, often less is more. Because not only does it lead to less visual complexity, but also text in a diagram can't be translated. So if you're translating your content into other languages, it's kind of just stuck in the diagram. Also, it can't be searched for in the same way that other content can. So always try to minimize the amount of text you have here. And if you do want to have more details, you can always have a numbered or bulleted list in the content below the diagram in the Confluence page. That's a really great way to be able to translate the text and have the text be indexed by a search engine. So there are a lot of great tips and tricks your team can use to make great diagrams that help people understand the concept you're trying to illustrate. Using these techniques, we made some great diagrams at K15T that successfully communicate things in a really simple way. But that's just us. How have you used diagrams in Confluence and what do you do to make them look awesome? Tell us about your secret sauce in the comments below. Also, this is just one of the many great things you can do in Confluence and we're always looking to draw upon that. So subscribe, share this video with someone who's trying to make a great looking diagram and join us for another video as we continue to explore how to use Confluence to share what you do best.